Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, it's David Parr, Leo King, and I'm here with Cam White of White Light Astrology. What's up, man? What up, man? Glad to see you in Vegas, finally. Well, the last time I saw you was in Vegas. Yeah, that was at your, um, uh, the Age of Deception, uh, It was, thing, yeah. Thing, uh, but we were, we were, even though it was my event, you and I were doing stuff behind the scenes, talking astrology. Well, I was like, so when I got here, I was like... I have nothing else better to do, so I'm just going to show up. It was like Friday morning, and then it was like that morning I ran into you, Leanne, uh, uh, other David, um, and your brother, right? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah my brother, uh, I, my dad was there. We had a lot of people. There was like 50 people at that event. Yeah, 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 and that's when I was just like, hey, man, like I'm here, I'm bored, like, you need help? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was a great time, and uh, ever since then, we've stayed in contact and been friends, so I don't know if uh, anybody has ever followed Cam, but follow him. He's White Light Astrology on YouTube. He does astrology, I'll be honest with you, he's in the same energy field as me. Like, there's not a lot of people where I can go, <laughs> yeah, I really relate with your astrology. I relate with your astrology 100. Thank you, I appreciate that. Well, you're, Maybe I, it's because we're both sun and Leos at zero degree, I don't know. Well, there's a lot. There's you know who else has sun at zero degree, Leo? That's an astrologer? <laughs> Kaipacha. Leshen. Really? Yeah. He's a zero degree Leo? He's a zero Leo. I did so not. me? Cam and Kaipasha, all zero degree Leos. I'm gonna share, I wanna ask you this. So talk about your show while I'm sharing this to people. So uh, I do a weekly video called What the Heck is Going On in the Universe. Uh, that's, it all kind of started because everyone would be texting me like, what's going on right now? I'm like, well, if I just do a weekly video, give you guys some insight. So the, during my weekly video, What the Heck is Going On in the Universe, it's all just about what is going on and how to really use it to your advantage. Not necessarily, you know, like going too in depth with it, but how to really use it and utilize it in the best way possible in order to grow. Uh, white light kind of stems from the whole ideology of all the colors of the spectrum enhancing at the same vibration. So I like to look at everybody's chart at a different type of, almost like a color spectrum. How can we enhance this to the most purest way possible? And that's what I really channel through my uh, weekly show called What the Heck is Going On in the Universe. Boom! <laughs> but it. also I check me out on Twitter at White Light Cam. If you guys are Twitter people, I'm on there all day long talking about astrology. So I also do that. Um, but yeah, you know, we when we first tried this out in the hotel lobby, we were talking about what's really the whole spectrum of what's going oh, on. Oh yeah, right I was now. kinda asking you, just overall, you can use astrology or not, just how do you feel the universe is at right now? Like where do you feel energetically things are? You know, it's like I mean we were talking about this earlier with all the Saturn, Mars, Pluto, stuff in Capricorn. We're there's a big turning point, It's but it's very subtle. It's very underlining. It's very, it, it's not noticeable unless you're very, I don't want to say conscious of it, but you're aware of what you're doing. Because I mean, Saturn's in Capricorn right now. Mars just left its conjunction. It's going to conjunct Pluto. So a lot of this, you know, Capricorn energy is really happy. We're all doing a lot. But at the same time, we're going into this change where after Mars conjuncts Pluto, it starts to enter its shadow. Saturn's yeah. retrograde, Pluto's retrograde. It's there's gonna be so much like and I've been if you've been watching my videos if you guys do follow me I've been talking about since basically January that from like January to March nothing happened it was, and it was weird because <laughs> all the planets were direct exactly you exactly know? I was like dude nothing's gonna happen once Mercury goes retrograde and Chiron hits Aries yeah. that's the start like that's when everything happens because Mercury re Mercury retrogrades of course is always just like a whoa okay now I see things in a different perspective then Chiron goes into Aries where it's been in Pisces in 10 years so all of us yeah. like you know spiritual people get in and tap with stuff it's not such a it, we've done the healing we've done we've done the work it's time to start taking action so I would say start you know making growth a real thing and while Mars is in Capricorn while Ch Chiron is in this uh, Aries ruled sign um, I mean Mars ruled sign of Aries right. I'm seeing so much more so, so many more people taking really decisive and uh, integral and confident actions what they're doing. Yeah. It's not like this big spiel of like, oh my God, I'm changing my whole world. It's like, yeah, I'm really confident in the work that I'm doing. I'm getting things done every single day. And I feel like this is a turning point for what the summer's gonna lead up to with Mars retrograde and you know Mercury retrograde again during the eclipse right on top of Mars. And the with Uranus and Taurus. are and, gonna be gnarly this year. No, the it, summer. and this is in my opinion, the the turning point that no one's gonna realize it's kind of like when you're watching a movie you think you know the turning point but if you after you watch the whole movie you look back you're like no that was the one yeah. scene that was the one point where everything started to change and right. I feel like that's where it's at right now and it's not like today or tomorrow it's like we got some time and I feel like once Uranus goes into Taurus it's gonna not distract us but it's gonna give us something new to focus on something new to yeah, really channel in and uh, that's gonna lead up to this whole summer and everything else and by the time we get to the end of this year it's like you know we're gonna be in a whole new world Jupiter goes into Sag, Sag yeah. Venus, Venus, Venus goes direct in Libra um, you know it's all giving, that stuff 
and I think you had brought up before we went live, or the last time we went live, you had brought up that it was it's like a subtle change. Like it's a lot of monumental stuff, but it's weird because the Capricorn, it it, it like it grinds it slowly, you know, in a weird way. It's like it's weird. It's, it's methodical. It's, yeah, it's like so. There's so much happening, but it's like we're aware of it at every turn. So it's like there's a lot of like hyper awareness now. So we are like, we know every millisecond going by, which I think before when Saturn was in Sag, it was like, oh my God, I'm over here and I'm over there. And blah, blah, blah. Everything's all over the place. Now it's kind of like, whoa, I want to make a change. I'm going to sit on this change for a while now. And, you and know everyone's I mean? like, why yeah. isn't this working anymore? Yeah, I'm like, it's okay. Like, every, like when I see people with like Capricorn in their 12th house stuff, I'm like, everything's just rusted over. Yeah. Like you got to put some WD-40. That's a it. good you analogy. Yeah. You know, like, uh, but you need paint thinner to get this layer of paint off. Like we've it's, we've it's been taking Saturn and Capricorn. Yeah. We built all of our stuff. I mean, this is back in the '80s. I mean, I wasn't even alive during that time. But with Saturn and Capricorn now, we we've built up structures in our life, and it's now that Saturn's in uh, retrograde. You know, we've had structures internally that we've built upon that. You yeah. know, make business work. It makes it efficient. It makes it effective. But now we're going into the stage in our lives where what we've done doesn't necessarily work in all other areas yeah. so we have to really it's like I, I've been using the analogy of it's kind of like when a corporation decides to make some subtle changes uh, yeah. they're like it's it's not these huge things where you know we're changing our logo and blah 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 blah, blah. it's like hey we're, we just going to incorporate some new corporate policies that we think are going to be a little yeah. bit more better and that's what this I feel like this energy really is for the meantime until yeah. you're honest goes into Taurus and then we're basically that's when it's like oh wait we can actually do this too I didn't even think we could do that in our lives you know well what I've been seeing lately is like Uranus and Aries, it's been everyone's been like, I gotta focus on me. I've got to figure out what I'm doing. What yeah. am I doing wrong? What am I doing right? Like all the attention, it's like all on social media, you know, like all that self validation and getting all that stuff. And the Uranus is gonna go into Taurus. We're gonna have such a value change in what we yeah. actually value. And I feel like that's gonna be a very surrendering moment to like, this isn't what I value anymore. Yeah. And I'm I need to value something more ingenuitive, more creative, more. Uh, you know, I like to use the term the su like super conscious. Like yeah. it's connected to everything. It has growth. It has meaning, and it has this grounded sense of bringing uh, change, bringing growth. Like Taurus yeah. is the gardener. Taurus yeah. waters the flowers and wants to watch it grow. It is the garden party. But I think <laughs> you know. I think you're right. I think the ca the way that you put the corporations and how they subtly make oh we gotta integrate these new things and it's like it kind of starts off small. But I think you're right when you're on a center's Taurus and then the last big solar. Eclipse that's really going to be big here in Leo during all the craziness that's going to be gone and that lunar eclipse that's going to happen this year with Mars retrograde. No, exactly. Like, that's where it's like. It's I, like there's I, a lot that's going to change, I think, faster than we felt at the beginning of this year. Yeah, yeah no, you the, know? The, first, the, the first three months, it's like, hey, dude, just like Saturn's a Capricorn, get comfortable. That's all I can say. Yeah, and get then, comfortable with slow and Mercury retrogrades. It's like, oh, I don't need to be doing that. I need to kind of re. I gotta rethink of my perspective, my understanding, my mindset around how I feel and what I'm taking action on. Because all that Mars Capricorn stuff. And yeah. Then it's like, we'll keep doing this. Uranus goes into Taurus, and then we're gonna have like this whole. I I can't describe it better than our values change. Like we're talking our about we're change, talking about too. veganism. Yeah. We're talking about uh, we're talking about uh, global climate change. We're yeah. talking about huge amplifications and with Uranus going yeah. here I, we're gonna have it squaring Mars as it retrogrades during all this yeah. eclipse it's gonna really be about in know, Aquarius too it's not like Mars in Aquarius is very controlled yeah no, <laughs> you know no, what no, I mean no, it's no, like, exactly it's gonna be like I think what I want to tell people is the change is gonna come so intense and it's almost like a vampire that needs blood because Taurus is a fixed sign uh, Mars is gonna be in a fixed sign retrograding and then you add Jupiter's in Scorpio there's it's, it's, it's the most eclipses in Leo so it's the <laughs> fixed cross yeah it's all the hungers and with the Saturn Capricorn element it's kind of like and Pluto there it's kind of like is are you really ready to change your are you ready to go from eating rats to human brains like are you ready for that <laughs> big of a commitment in your hunger and your no, change it, it, and people are all at that point though we're like that might sound a little bit better yeah no you know? seriously because it's like all of this fixed energy it's so like um like ugh, like you're yeah. not moving you you want things to be a certain you're way you're not happy a certain way. you know fixed signs you're either happy or you're not there's 
no in between. And you go to a Capricorn show advice for Saturn, and you're yeah. like, they're like, well, like that doesn't work. Do something else. Yeah, well, do something what, else. What, what? What do you like? Well, like turn the ship. T- exactly. Yeah, like it's yeah, so yeah. simple and. Especially, I just think it's so funny that Mars still hasn't hit that shadow point yet. Because it's yeah. like, right when Mars hits shadow, that's like, that's when I'm all eyes on what everything else is going on. But during this eclipse part where we have, you know, Aquarius, Leo opposing each other. And there's all that. that one in Cancer, 20 degrees on July 12th, which is kind of interesting. That's yeah, 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 yeah. And that, I mean, we have the nodes going into Cancer right after that, correct? Yeah, um, at the end of the year, yeah. But I think uh, it's the weirdest is the solar eclipse happens... July 12th while Mars is retro. That's the solar eclipse. Yeah, and then the first the, one. Then there's the lunar. The lunar, lunar on the 20, yeah, 26. Six, yeah. yeah, at yeah. four degrees uh, Leo Aquarius. You know, I think it's going to come down to... With Mars there. I think it's going to come down to so much of, you know, the North Node's in Leo. It's like, okay, what are, what are, what are we passionate about? What do we need to stand out? What are, what are we, what are, not necessarily your desires with Jupiter and Scorpio, but where's our heart? Yeah. And where is that leading us? And with Aquarius, if we have all of it's, it means a Saturn ruled sign. We're looking yeah. at what are the problems with that? How can we integrate that? How can we be of self sacrifice yeah. and of service to something bigger? And then Uranus is in Taurus. It's like, well, it's got to look a certain way. Yeah. It's, I mean, we're, we're, Taurus, it's well, pretty it has to bring so nice, quality to your life, but in a way that is going to take you higher because Uranus is the ruler of the heavens, right? So it's a stairway to heaven. It's like, if it's not a better stairway for you in your life, then you might not want to do it. But if it is, this is a huge year to make a huge leap. I mean, I believe Mars, Saturn, Pluto, and Capricorn is like big, huge. You know when you think of a temple and you think of all the stairs? Yes. That's a climb, you know? That's yes. like, do you, are you ready to go that high? I think with everything, if you look in life, it's asking for everybody to step up higher than they've ever gone in their life. And everybody's hungry to, but then I think people start to walk down the steps and they go, I want instant satisfaction now. I well, want to be, the, isn't there an escalator to get there? It's, it's like, the no. It's the insecurity of Capricorn. Right? It's, the, it's yeah. the, my walls are coming down and I can't deal with it. And it, yeah, Capricorn's and, risk. It, it's risk. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it comes down to Saturn and Capricorn, our walls are coming down in ways. And I mean, we're all at this, is Jupiter and Scorpio. We're going to have all these eclipses in Leo and all this fixed stuff. It's getting out of our comfort zone yeah and if we're want to we want to be in control of so much but there's just so much control to be uh that's i mean i look at it as the fixed signs is you got four football players i mean this is the most generic example yeah, i can yeah. use but four football players are all great quarterbacks they're all trying to be a quarterback but who's going to be the best team leader yeah who's really going to get you know the prize is going to be aquarius who does his own unique different thing is going to be the tom brady the leo right. is it going to be you know um something that you know something that's work i mean we're also talking about tradition when we talk right. about taurus and you're just going to go in there where Maybe we have to break free of traditions and start something new, yeah. start creating something different. And it comes back down to what do we really value? What do we really value about ourselves? What do we value about our community? And we have Jupiter and Scorpio talking about, well, what's the underlying truth of it all? Yeah, and if you mix that most of the stuff is in a cardinal and fixed signs, the mutable energy is really getting weak. Yeah. So Well, they also had Saturn. Saturn. So it's, it's <laughs> almost like this is starting new stuff, new vibrations, new areas to go. When we had all that mutable energy the last couple of years, I mean, you literally feel like you're in a blender and everything's ending and everything's kind of completing and you're a little like lost. This energy, if you're lost, it's because you're afraid to just do what you know you're supposed to do. That's how I feel. It yeah, is. and when we talk about Capricorn and we talk about Saturn, it's like, it's very integral. It's yeah. very like, this is, it's not like something where if you have like a Saturn Leo or Taurus where it's like, it's an egotistical yeah. thing. It's a power thing. With Capricorn, it's like, that's an integrity thing. Is that really how you want to operate the business of who you right. are? Is that really the, the structure that you want yeah. to create? Is, does that, what does that mean for you? And that create that, you know, having all that Capricorn stuff deals with building up walls, you yeah. know, and tearing down walls is hard. I mean, look at the Saturn return of the Berlin Wall. Came up yeah, during Saturn Capricorn, went down Saturn Capricorn. I know. Like, that's... That Saturn, and which for Trump, building, it same was, shit probably will go down. You a, know what I a, mean? He'll a, probably a, throw up a little wall, and then they'll be like, "Wait, it was a waste of time," and put it all down. Yeah, you ex- know exactly. It, it, and <laughs> it's funny. There's no need to put barriers or restrictions on anything, but there is a sort of syst- systemic type of uh, change that we've got to make, that we've got yeah. to implement. And I feel like all this fixed energy is getting us in alignment with. Because if we're talking about fixed energy, Aquarius, Taurus, uh, Aquarius, Taurus, Leo, uh, Scorpio. 
they all want what they want. Yeah. And there's no changing their minds. It's about stepping into what role is gonna be suiting you. So if it's like, you know, if the Leo energy is really dominant in your chart, you're gonna be stepping into that, but maybe you also have to deal with the Aquarius aspects the Aquari of that, yeah. the Scorpio and the Taurus aspect. It's about no. implementing what is gonna be better for your growth. What is gonna be better for what you stand for? Because Saturn and Capricorn is, we're building new structures right now. Whatever you're implementing, whatever you're developing, whatever you're trying to break down or start new, like this is yeah. gonna have an effect over a long time. And it's where true. every we have all of this stuff in, uh, you know, fixed signs where it can be really easy to be self-focused, be really easy to um, get lost inside your head. Whereas, you know, with mutable signs, it's like you're just going crazy there for yeah. a while. But with fixed signs, it's like, bro, you gotta let go. Maybe we need to chill out. Maybe we need to look at the perspectives because what's so funny, when you see Taurus, Leo, Aquarius, Scorpio, they're like the four signs you think would battle the most, but we're always the best friends because yeah, we're, like, we're always like... It, it's On the same level of confidence, you know, confidence, confidence of and control. want and, and whatever that is, let's do it, let's own it, let's hold on to it. And I think all this is happening because next year, Saturn-Pluto conjunction. Jupiter's gonna enter Capricorn with Saturn and Pluto. We haven't seen that transit in over 800 years. I think this year is building people to get them to a certain spot in their life because let's be real, next year's gnarly. Yeah, no. gnarly. Like even though this year's gnarly, it's like, really? You're, the universe, you're gonna throw even more gnarly in 2019? So I feel like it's like, we have to make the changes now and get to the space that even, it might be Especially hard and break those barriers of integrity even on ourselves that might be not really worth it, right? Like it, That's why I've been hitting so much on Jupiter and Scorpio, like what is your truth and live that truth? Because Jupiter goes into Sag next year where we have all this crazy shit, yeah. but- To take you to where that truth goes. Exactly. But if you're, because you know. like, in my opinion, like everything's riding on Jupiter and Sag yeah. next year. Like we have Saturn and Capricorn, Jupiter and Sag. Like, what who's happier yeah. is it going to be saturn and capricorn where you're like you're doing the work or walls are come down or is it jupiter and sag where yeah. where in jupiter and scorpio we're learning about what our truth is we're yeah. realizing yeah. that now that jupiter Scor and was retrograde we're like oh my god there's certain internal truths there's certain hardcore beliefs about uh you know whether it was from your childhood or experiences that you had that you've got to learn to let go of that you've got to learn to bring into a whole a holistic light yeah. and once we do that work when jupiter goes into sag all of this all of this is just going to be a no-brainer it's just yeah. going to be easy once we're right and on jupiter is going to square Neptune, which in my opinion, especially in Neptune and Pisces, Jupiter and Sag, it's like Disneyland, that vibe. Like it's, it's, it's you got to believe in a huge, imaginative, crazy place and it's possible, but man, you have to have been kind of like Walt Disney in a place where people are like, yeah, right, but he knows inside, I got to do this. Yeah. And I think that's what this year is. It's kind of like how Walt Disney goes, I want to build Disneyland. Next year is like the seriousness of like, yeah, right, but no, yeah, actually you can. Like, it's pretty crazy. Well, yeah, because after, I mean, just looking at the Jupiter cycle, Jupiter's gonna go into Sag where we're, our, our, our hopes are high and everything, but then once Jupiter goes into Capricorn where it's in its fall, yeah, and we yeah. have all of those gnarly conjunctions, like whatever And we, the south node's there, and the eclipses are there. No, <laughs> like there's so much that's going to be changing and the, the, it's inevitable. And it's not yeah. like your whole world's gonna collapse, but at this time, you can use so much of what Jupiter's, I mean, I've been loving Jupiter and Scorpio. Yeah. It's like everything, everything's exposed yeah. and everybody is, you know, like naked. Like yeah. we, we could all see everything. You can't hide it. You can't. So with that being said, you know, as Jupiter's retrograde, you can't hide it from yourself either. Yeah. And, once and you have to bring back parts of yourself maybe you pushed away for so long. I can't tell you how many times I've been like, oh, I didn't realize I was like holding that in. Like, whoops, yeah. I gotta have to like really look like, at that. Yeah, let me bring that back out. <laughs> Yeah, and, and see if it's worth it. I think the Uranus and Taurus, sure, you might be bringing out some Scorpio crazy shit again in yourself. I think Uranus and Taurus goes, do you really want to take that with you up there to the universe, like yeah. to the higher part you of your life? Old, do you want that with you or not? Do you want that backpack Yeah, do you want that backpack full of drugs? Do you really want to take that with you? Do you want the backpack full of shame and guilt? Like, yeah, I know. You, can you just like let go of that? And Uranus and Taurus, it's a... Our whole value system is going to change. Yeah. Our whole what we appreciate. Like when Uranus has been in Aries, it's been like all about the self. And that's been great. We've grown so much. But now that we're at this, I, like, look at the past seven years. We're in a whole new society. Yeah. Even though it's like people are like, oh, I mean, it's been going on for this. Like, we're really deep. Yeah, we're, we're really, way deep. We, we re identified <laughs> the way life and the world works in Aries. Exactly. Like, you know, it's a Facebook, Twitter, 
social media Inge identity. Revolutionizing engine, what our identity yeah. is. Yeah. Now we're going to have a revolution of what we value yeah. and what's important. And, what and it's going to, I think, expose people who might have looked like they were really a value and really it was like, no, I don't get shit from that. No, exactly. You know exactly. what I mean? Because like, I don't get shit. I'm giving my energy to that and it doesn't do nothing for me. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And especially during the... That might be hard, though, for people. I think that's going to be the hardest part, Uranus and Taurus, is realizing it's not as valuable as I thought it was. And that's what's going to be hard about the Mars retrograde. Because yeah. we're going to be wanting to take all this action. Mars is going to go retrograde during that time square Uranus exactly. And it's like, if I don't value this, where do I go? What yeah. direction, like, how creative can I get about this? And yeah. as it's retrograde, it's going to feel like you have all these options, but it's just the... The world is endless, but not in that way like, oh my God, look at all the possibilities. It's like, well, where do I really go with this and new understanding? people-wise, I don't think people know where to go with people. The south node's in Aquarius. Uranus is going to be squaring Mars, right? And Mars is in Aquarius wanting to identify with a group, but I don't think we know which group, which people. So I think there's, and with Chiron Aaron Aries, there's this like alone kind of like, Oh shit, I'm kind of alone. I gotta like kinda do this alone. You gotta really do, weird. You way. gotta you do the work I mean? you gotta do the work yourself. Like yeah, no yeah. one else can fix you. You've gotta And there is no like it. little safe group of people that'll be there. Like shoot, they may cheer you on a little bit, but they're not gonna do shit like they're not gonna like change your life for you. Of course not. The, 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 no, the North Node's in Leo. It's all yeah, about it's it, all about your own it, exactly power. And, basically, yeah. I think that's funny what you said about, you know, the South Node not being able to relate to people because, I mean, look at the, the same Mars retrograde happened right at the dawn of World War II. And it was like, Germany was like, okay, who's on our side? Who's not on our yeah. side? Are we in this alone? It was a very, I mean, it's kind of like, yeah, sure, that's a kind of a negative example, right. but using the example of, they had to figure out who was on their side. They had to figure out, and I mean, Mars is going to go retrograde into Capricorn, go direct. Right. Like, that's huge power moves. That's huge. I mean, during the eclipse, during all that stuff, huge power moves. And it's interesting, like, if you think of World War II, right, it's like, okay, the axis of quote-unquote evil was Japan and Germany, right? But now, if you look at the world, it's like, you wouldn't think of those two as no, evil at places all. at all, right? Yeah. So it's like, and I hate to say this, America could even be put under the, um, south the, the, the position of being looked at as the evil empire. Well, the South Node's conjunct the America's moon. I, I know, mean, there's Saturn's a lot and, of and weird America stuff about to end, have especially at, with Pluto and what it's doing to all this. Have you looked at the, uh, the NRA's chart? No. Oh my God. It is like, they had Mars and Saturn conjunct in Capricorn at seven degrees. Oh wow! I was so like, just, that was had, just, right yeah, in the middle yeah. of all that NRA wow, stuff. Yeah. And their north, their south, it's either the north node or their south node is conjunct their moon in Aquarius, so like the first couple degrees. And I think it's in their fourth. Well, house, have you right? seen the European Union? It was like Scorpio, Scorpio, Venus retrograde, Mercury scored. Like they're oh, yeah. they're they're gonna break up. I oh yeah, the European it, Union's like. No, as far With as the Venus retrograde, I think at the end of the year, going through Scorpio Libra. That's the only the European thing. Union. I think it's going to be like Brexit with a bunch of countries. Oh yeah, totally. Especially with um, just again, Uranus is in Taurus, so we're looking at Venus. She's going to be in Scorpio in her yeah. uh, out everything, and this is going to be a lot. We're going to really have a like I can't emphasize enough on that value switch, and it's going to be really serious because this is Taurus we're talking about. Where yeah, Taurus is like I love you know, nice things. I always like using the Taurus analogy of Netflix wine in bed. Like that's as Taurian as you can get. And then as Venus goes, don't forget the dessert either. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and the massage oil. And the massage oil <laughs> and the right incense yeah, and the right and crystals. The right, and the right like, sheets. And oh uh, my gosh. a massaging bed that reclines in the right direction. Exactly. And a really nice 4K TV. And now Uranus <laughs> is going to be here and it's like, no, we want these things. And Venus and Scorpio is going to be like, ooh, like, can I do that? And yeah. is that what I really value? Is yeah. that my truth? I mean, yeah. Venus and Scorpio is so passionate about uh, uncovering secrets, about understanding. Yeah, Venus and Scorpio deaths. will have sex in a third world country on a bed with springs popping out just the, because they want hey, the hey, connection hey. and the feeling. <laughs> exactly. It doesn't matter about the bed. It doesn't matter about the incense or the massage or anything. It doesn't matter if you haven't taken a shower in three days. There's a little bit of a Venus Scorpio that's like, I kind of like the smell of that. Yeah, no. Ask people if I think it up crazy. But it's so true. Venus and Taurus would be like, you haven't showered. You smell like shit. Yeah, no. <laughs> seriously. You smell like shit. It's going to get real raw. It's going to get really raw. But yeah. once Venus hits, like, Libra, I feel like so much. It's going to be like a chaotic 
ball, like a snowball running down the hill, and then it's like gonna come to this really peaceful stop. I think that, you're right. I think the Venus Libra Direct, while you're, the south node is gonna be entering into Capricorn because it'll come out of Aquarius, that's when we find our tribes, our relationships, our people, and this is healing a decade old of where Saturn went. When Saturn went to where Venus is gonna retrograde, that was when people, spirituality, relationships, everything got really weird in 2012. Oh yeah, where Saturn, no, everything. Everything, and Venus is gonna be the last major planet to do any crazy retrograde in this space. Because if you think about it, no outer planets are coming to that area of Scorpio or Venus for, for a minute. For a long time. No, not even Jupiter, not even Saturn, like nothing. Ju yeah, the next Only a Mercury be... retrograde, I don't even know what that'll be, and that's nothing. Mercury it, retrogrades to me. Well, it's, it's like, like the, the next Mars spec, retrograde. You know? like the next Mars retrograde. Yeah, the Mars there. retrogrades aren't even coming in that zone for de a de over a decade. Yes. So it's like We're, nothing's gonna happen <laughs> in retrograde in Scorpio Libra. For a long time, and, and it's except Mercury, hit, but that's hit, it. Hit there. So, and that's where it's been the hardest hit, even with Pluto in the 80s, you know. So it's kind oh, of and yeah. Saturn conjunction, which is ironic because the Pluto Saturn conjunction is happening next year, and so it's really going to be Capricorn. It's going to be Aquarius, so big, but so boring big, at the same time. That's the construction <laughs> zone. Yeah, it's like you got. It's like literally watching construction happen, but you know, it's not like there, there's bombs going off okay. and everyone's having a party. It's just kind of like, yep, people are building things. That's true, <laughs> I know. Things are changing. Well, like, like show, we show the camera over there. Here we're at the Hard Rock and see their construction zone. That's Capricorn Aquarius. You can't see it in here. Uh, oh, you can't. Oh wait, now you can. Right, and then you can like turn over here. It's like they just finished all the work, and that's. Scorpio Libra with Venus finishing it's kind of the the workers kind of leaving the job site a little bit yeah and you know I, and for sex relationships you know those two and passion and relation that shit's for everybody I don't care who you are it's that's a place that everybody's so uncertain with well, you have because well, that transit's about to finish there. Well, it's know? so funny because you have Capricorn deals a lot with sex. Scorpio does a lot yeah. with sex. Leo yeah. fifth house sex. Like yeah, I know. so much of it is that primal yeah. like energy, and it's so um, intense. Like it's life force energy coming out. The of universe us. is about to have an orgasm finally. Yeah, it's been, literally. It's been, it's been Uranus, literally Uranus waiting Uranus forever. Uranus it's been like sitting there, <laughs> like oh god. Uranus and Taurus, you I can know? definitely say, is like a universal orgasm. Yeah. Like getting comfortable in your zone, uh, yeah. getting excited about it, all that kind of good stuff. But, you know, I think it all comes, in my opinion, it all comes back down to Chiron and Aries. Yeah. It comes back down to... And continuing to retrograde back to the 29th degree of Pisces, which is kind of like, uh, I think going we're going to jump underworld. into all these new things and then come back to some old rooted shit that needs to be cleared and be like, can I... Re and then the doubt that might come of, did I do the right thing? And I think the lesson is you did... Clear up your sensitivities about it. This is the way that it went. This is the way that life went. Just get used to it. Like, well, kind of weird. It's, and Uranus is coming back into Aries again. That's. I think that's going to be like a more explosive energy with yeah. Chiron going back into Pisces. It's going to be like a... Let's For the past 10 years, we've been all on our own spiritual journey. It's like all of a sudden we wake up, then all of a sudden, it's like when someone dies and they resuscitate them, they come back to life, and it's like you die again for like three seconds and they bring you back to life, and you're like, okay, I'm fine. Like, just had to double check there for a second. And, um, oh my God, what was I gonna say about that? And the only two big aspects with Chiron as he's in Aries is, it's like a, a, a conjunction to the North Node and yeah. a trying to like Jupiter, yeah. and that's like it? Or something like that. I or no or conjunction Jupiter with Jupiter. Jupiter will square. Uh, Jupiter will square. It. Jupiter will square it. Yeah. Jupiter will also conjunct it, and um, uh, something to do with the south node, north node. But there's not that many. Maybe bad even aspects I don't know. I'd have to look because I think Pisces comes back to 29 degrees Pisces at the end of the year, and Jupiter well, will be coming in. The, Jupiter will actually square. Oh no! It'll be trining Chiron. So yeah, yeah. Jupiter when it yeah Jupiter will square Aries. And there's in not Capricorn, yeah. there's not that much bad affliction as yeah to, there's you know, not whereas where, where Chiron Pisces, comes up Neptune yeah, where it's just like well, and who? the south node was through there <laughs> and the eclipses were through there and Saturn squared it and it, it was, there was a lot it was just confusing and I think with Chiron and Aries it comes back down to we've got to really start to take action yeah. on what we can do like we're talking about Aries we're talking about anger frustration we're talking about ability uh, I feel like something with Aries is they take on responsibility so hardcore yeah. especially other people's you know I mean because anytime yeah. you're dealing with Aries you're dealing with they're, they're the heroes they try to be the heroes and rush in sometimes they rush in when they don't need to rush in either exactly like, and they're always of service They it's that yeah. Mars energy of having to give having to be of something and, and then they get upset 
if nobody wants it. It's kind of like a, if a paramedic was recessing somebody and then they just redid it. It's like, I ran all the way here and I've got the thing and what? You don't need me? It's like, <laughs> we just did it. We're, thanks, bro. And then they want that because their 10th house is Capricorn. They want that. Look what I did. You yeah, know? exactly. Like, do you realize what I did? It's like, oh my gosh. And like, with that kind of... We Aries, get it. And with Chiron and Aries, it's like, you can't get mad because it's just going to bring pain. You can't get frustrated. It's just going to get you all hurt. But it's if you true. really go into like, okay, how can I take more healing action, more yeah. authoritative healing action? Not just like, oh, you know, I'm healing myself. Like, be like, no, I'm doing something different for me because yeah, this is what exactly. it's going to take to heal. And it's not going to be so much with Chiron. I feel like Chiron Pisces has just been like, we're, we're just all so crazy. We, that was just like a bad. I just think it, <laughs> Chiron and Pisces, especially since I am a little older. So it was like, I really saw so much shift in realizing there's so many conflicts inside of ourself that we had to overcome of like whether or not we're okay because I think that Pisces we can get really lost right with God universe spirit inquisitive and we, can, we and Chiron there kind of makes us feel like is God really looking after me like why did that fucking happen? You know, stuff like that. Because Chiron's kind of the, I always call him Quasimodo with the weird <laughs> eyes and everything. Like, yeah. you know, I think he's kind of like, everybody's like, what the hell? And I think the end of it is kind of like realizing the universe got our back. Like, you need to heal that inside no matter what's going on. Timing, the universe, it's all perfect. Don't trip out. I think Chiron and Pisces and that, was learning to not trip out. And it was hard when Saturn was squaring it because everyone was like, where do we go? We yeah, got, we, we've got to keep pushing forward. And then Chiron's right there. It's like, well, we don't know what we can or can't do. That's why what... everybody freaked out when the election happened and Donald Trump won. Oh, because was... Saturn was squaring Neptune. Saturn, you know, Chiron's with Pisces. Everybody was like, I love this the... is the worst thing that ever happened. It's like, whatever it is, it doesn't matter your political side. It happened for some reason that we have to trust on a higher level. This is, that was the lesson. This is what I think is really funny about Donald Trump. Cause I'm not like in him coming in so much truth about politics is just emerging. We got Saturn and Capricorn where it's like yeah. issues are beginning. I know. And I mean, we still got so much more. He Capricorn, was a like, catalyst, but I don't think he's the end game. I think the next president based off the astrology is the, is the, is the shift point is the one that'll either fuck it up or sh whatever. Well, everybody everybody thinks it's that, Trump. Well, it's so, the next one. Well, it's when we get next into one. that, we have Pluto going into Aquarius. So we have Saturn and Jupiter all going into Aquarius like the same year. I we know. got the whole new... Uh, that and whole that's new when energy. the founding fathers came in, was during all those Aquarian oh, energy. Yeah. And I don't... I yeah. think it's... I don't feel like... Don't, I, he's not like... I, I, I yelled at a guy because he... I saw him throw he's a bunch not going to be window. a founding father, if that he, makes sense. No. He's, he's and a, he's not going to... Does anybody... Yeah. He's not here to destroy the world either. He's just... What he's doing is... He's a sun Uranian soul exactly Eclipse. he's an alien that i don't even think he realizes to come down here and just fucking just take the desk and go <laughs> you know but, what i mean but his leo rising it's like you would never question his confidence because yeah, he's so no, like yeah. that but i mean now everyone's like well you kind of suck and yeah, xyz yeah, yeah. but with all that being said he's just bringing out what needs to be worked on yeah, with Saturday exactly. Capricorn. that's all he is and any president that has been elected in a uh zero year Right, so 1980, Ronald Reagan got shot. Jeez. Every president that's been nominated in a zero year has died, except for uh, Reagan. And it was after that shot where he survived is when he brought the astrologer on for Nancy Reagan. Yeah, she yeah. And everything. So the 2020 president, I mean, it's just statistics. Every tw died. <laughs> so if, if Trump is elected in 2020, I, I, he will I, die. I, 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 don't, I hate to say that. I but don't. Like, I astrologically, did, it says that. I could. I could see that. I just. I don't. I don't know how he can do it again. Yeah, I've been. I don't know why my guides have been saying he's not going. He's not going to make it to. I don't think he's going to get like kicked out of office. But I don't think he's going to. I think I keep getting physically because of all the six house shit that's about to hit him in his life. Uh -huh. I think he won't be able to be physically fit for it. Yeah, no. And I think he's going to have a chicken nugget that like, he you did, know, gets he, stuck in his heart. And he, he did what he, he wanted to do. Yeah. He got the attention. And I mean, or he just gets tired and bored. That's exactly yeah, what's yeah. going to happen. Like, yeah. I don't like he's, he's a Gemini with sudden Uranus. He, he it's not simulating enough anymore. No, of course not. There'll it's, be it's, something it's where he'll reach his ADHD. He'll reach his ADHD level. And he'll be like, oh, I'm over it. There's nothing stimulating in the world left for me. And I think that'll be his time in the world when he realizes 
there's he's a son of the 10th house you're honest like he wanted the most stimulating fame of his life in a lunar eclipse too with his moon in the fourth and i think he's reached that and i think he, i think that's his end like what higher more can you get? Yeah, you're just going to Taurus in his 10,000th. Like, unless like, you want to try and turn yourself into a god. Unless you're trying to be like Elon Musk and like yeah. change the world forever, like you really ain't got nothing too much else to do. And, um, you well, know, I think that's what you, you bring up the best point. I think the newest leaders are not presidents or whatever. They're, they're people, entrepreneurs. They're entrepreneurs who want to change the world and create things that are going to help the world go forward that those are the newest extreme positive and that actually happened in the 1900s you know it wasn't like you know when, when people like brought out the like Henry Ford brought out the the Ford you know the car it was like he was looked at as this huge guy like there's a lot of that gonna be I think turning back around you know uh, because I think people looking up to a president I think it's like a joke. Well, we're taking it's, it's nationality like, is becoming obsolete. Yeah. Like being all proud to be American, not as you know, like we're like you know, I'm I'm proud to be American. Yeah. I, like, I like the fact that I have these rights and freedoms, but the whole like I have to you scream to the world that I'm prideful yeah. of being together. It's like we're we're at a time where we're so connected to the we're rest a melting of the world. pot too. Yeah. It's like like we're so we're so connected to the rest of the world that it's not about who's leading our nation, but it's like, who's leading our world? Yeah, who's leading And I mean, the who, is the, who is the guy, uh, inventor of five-hour energy, he's from India. Oh yeah, he's, yeah. Like, he's Dude, changing big, the world. Big. Like He's invested billions into other projects. Yeah, into like, life-changing. Yeah, I know. Like, yeah, he's cool dude. Reality-bending things. And we're at this time now where, like again, I can't hit on enough that this change is so subtle. And by yeah. the time we get to this end of the year, it's gonna be like, whoa, 2018. It was I think a, not like 2017 where everyone's like, oh my god, can we get out of I here? But it's gonna be like, whoa, well, that no, wasn't 2018 what we is gonna it was. end great. But I think 2019 is gonna have this daunting curtain that we all know is gonna open. But at least we're in a really good spot. Yeah, you know what exactly. I mean. Like, 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 at least we're comfortable in our seats. And actually, I think by <laughs> then we're around people that we feel like. I'm going through this with you guys, and I want to go through it with you guys. Yeah, I mean, and that's the other thing. We're, we're Uranus and Taurus, like, dude, we're all connected. We're yeah. all together. Like, there's going to be, like, that's, I, Uranus and Taurus is just going to change so much of our mindset about everything. Yeah. That's why I'm like, I'm not worried about technically really what's going on at this moment, because so much of what we value, so much of what grounds ourselves, what yeah. brings us together is changing. It's changing, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. good talk, dude. You yeah. Know, <laughs> that was a lot there, but um, we'll put this on YouTube. So you find you at White Light Astrology, right? Whitelightastrology.com, YouTube, White Light Astrology, Facebook, White Light Astrology, Twitter at White Light Cam. Follow me on Twitter. That's why He's a big at. Twitter guy. Twitter changes the world. And um, <laughs> there you have it. When two Leos get together, fucking, that's how astrology. It, now we just need Kaiposha, and it would be all three of us zero degree Leos. I don't even know how that would go down. How would we all see who would be first? <laughs> I don't know. I think we all are okay with sharing the stage. Yeah. The zero zero Leo, we, we have to get used to the attention. Yeah. And I think we all feed off each other. But, no, it's um, not fire energy. It is, true. But, anyway, if you guys have questions, you know, put them uh, on the YouTube or whatever, and, and Cam and I will answer them uh, in under my YouTube video, and I'll send him this video so he can put it on his, too, so... Definitely. But thanks, guys. Thank thanks you. Thanks for hanging out with us. Peace.